How wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the new updates and some of the new observations and new discoveries from the most distant galaxy we've ever seen. The galaxy that you see right here that was discovered less than one year ago, basically beating all previous records. And no chances are in the next few years researchers might discover an even farther candidate because right now this is the farthest object we've ever seen, it's obviously created a lot of excitement with many new studies and new observations trying to actually figure out what's going on here. And so let's discuss this galaxy in a bit more detail, starting with a very brief review of how this galaxy was found. Naturally, this was discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope, and specifically inside the survey known as JATES, GWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey. The survey that's somewhat equivalent to the famous Hubble Deep Field, when the Hubble Space Telescope observed a single spot in the night skies over 10 consecutive days. And just like with the Hubble observations, the point here with the James Webb Space Telescope was basically very similar. Pick a point that's pretty dark and that doesn't seem to contain anything and stare at it for a very long time, essentially using long exposure. And the main purpose here was to try to find super distant, practically invisible objects that no other telescope has ever seen. And naturally, after approximately 130 hours of observations, lots and lots of new galaxies suddenly appeared in the middle of nowhere, visible in the image right here, or in the image you can explore by yourself in one of the links in the description. And though this actually looks like a relatively large image, in reality, this is actually comparable to a tiny, tiny grain of sand placed on your fingertips and then extended to an arm length, roughly around two feet away from your eyes, that's essentially the size of this image if you were to look at this in the night skies. And so inside this super tiny grain, James Webb was able to detect thousands and thousands of different never before seen galaxies. And almost right away, a few of these galaxies kind of stood out, mostly because they appeared to be extremely far away due to their apparent redshift. And obviously it took a few months to confirm them, this one eventually won. JSGS Z14-0 currently seems to be the farthest galaxy we've ever seen. But the initial observations from the James Webb and the spectroscopic analysis suggested the redshift of 14.32. And in terms of actual physical distances, you can actually use this pretty cool calculator by Ned Wright from UCLA to convert any redshift into light years. And so here, 14.32 suggests that the light traveled for 13.43 billion light years, but also that it traveled for 33.9 billion light years in terms of distance. This is because of the expansion of the universe, which made the light travel a much farther distance. And so because of this discovery, in the last few months there's been a lot of different studies trying to conduct additional observations just to find out what's going on here. And so in one of the recent studies, researchers actually used a different telescope in order to confirm this galaxy and its distance using different observations. They actually use the ALMA telescope, which can see things in the microwave and can detect things a lot more accurately. And here, even though they managed to confirm the existence of the galaxy, the distance was recalculated to be a little bit closer. And this was based on super accurate microwave observations, specifically focusing on emissions of oxygen, with the observations suggesting the redshift to be 14.1793. And so here, if we actually change this, the overall distance changes by just a little bit, suggesting that this galaxy is maybe 4 million years younger than we actually thought. Definitely a minor difference. But once again confirming that this is still the farthest galaxy ever seen, and more importantly confirming that this galaxy seems to be indeed somewhat unusual. Unusual in a sense that it seems to be way more advanced than expected. But not like super advanced. So basically here it doesn't actually break major theories like the Big Bang theory, but it does suggest that the star formation very likely started much earlier than we thought, with the first galaxies assembling earlier as well. And also suggesting that the overall star formation and the overall galactic evolution seems to be entirely different from how we imagine it to be, or from how it was previously simulated by various computer simulations such as the Illustrious project you see right here. In essence, there was a major discrepancy between supercomputer simulations and the actual visual evidence. But let's actually briefly discuss exactly what these differences are. First of all, the size. Previous simulations established that around this time, or about 290 million years after the Big Bang, galaxies should be maybe a few hundred light years across. This one though was approximately 1600 light years. So basically still something like 70 times smaller than the Milky Way, 
but much larger than anticipated. Also surprisingly, this was extremely bright, which is of course the main reason we're able to see it. It's quite likely a lot of other galaxies are probably present here as well, we just don't really see them, but this one is super visible because it seems to be extra luminous. As a matter of fact, it seems to contain approximately half a billion solar masses in mass in terms of active stars, and that's once again several times more than expected around this period. And most of the models and most of the simulations do not predict anything like this at all. Mostly because there's just not enough time for galaxies to grow so massive and so bright. And the brightness in this case basically indicates extremely active star formation, which is also unexpected during this period. This is essentially during the period referred to as the Dark Ages, which researchers always believed was basically when the stars were still kind of picking up in strength and the galaxies were only starting to form. Yet here we see something that's super active and is already growing very fast. But the much more surprising detection came from several recent studies, and mostly because of a very specific wavelength. Here this was from the MIRI instrument on top of the James Webb, and specifically the 7.7 .7 micron observations. In more layman terms, an extremely specific wavelength able to detect very unique emission lines. And so here several independent studies confirmed the same thing. They confirmed the presence of extremely strong ionized gas emissions, and specifically the oxygen emission line known as O3, a super strong emission of oxygen that's actually never been seen before from such a distant galaxy. And because in astronomy oxygen is technically a metal, this also makes this galaxy very high in metallicity. The concept you can learn about in some of the previous videos in the description, and that is super unexpected. We actually expect this galaxy to be predominantly hydrogen and helium, yet this strong emission line of oxygen suggests otherwise. Essentially here what we're seeing is a somewhat metal-enriched galaxy that seems to have already existed 294 million years after the Big Bang, once again confirming that the galactic formation theories are currently incomplete, but also definitively confirming that the early universe was just extremely different from how we imagine it to be. Here this kind of reinforces the idea that a lot of galaxies in the early universe potentially evolved much more rapidly and with intensity that we never imagined. This has actually also been confirmed by observing a lot of different quasars and a lot of unusual objects we've discussed previously referred to as little red dots. You can learn about this in the video in the description. And so here right now the best explanation we have that once again seems to be aligned with the observational evidence is that this galaxy potentially had an extremely powerful starburst activity or some kind of a massive star formation burst in the last few millions of years that suddenly enriched this galaxy with highly ionized oxygen molecules they are now emitting so much bright light, specifically ultraviolet light, that it's visible from billions and billions of light years away. And because it's so far away from us, this light has been redshifted to be visible in 7.7 .7 microns, or basically mid-infrared. But because we now see signs of metallicity in a super distant galaxy, it definitively confirms that even inside this galaxy, it already experienced several very powerful supernova that managed to convert all of this primordial hydrogen into much heavier elements such as oxygen. And because this is a continuous event with a lot of powerful stars nearby, this oxygen becomes ionized and becomes super bright. And so right now researchers believe that this galaxy very likely has been doing this for at least 100 million years, implying that this galaxy is approximately 100 million years old, but also putting the birth of this galaxy right at the edge of the dark ages. So this galaxy seems to have been born as soon as some of the first stars formed as well. And right now these observations are extremely accurate. Here we have 43 hours of observations with the MIRI instrument and 167 hours with the NIRCAM. This actually took approximately 9 days of observations in total. And so the existence and the overall properties of this galaxy have been measured extremely precisely. But there are obviously still some things that don't really make sense. And so some of the studies try to solve this by basically trying to imagine or essentially trying to explain what this region was like just a few hundred million years following the Big Bang. But here some of the conclusions can also be made by not what we can see but also what we can't see. And specifically here researchers do not actually see any carbon and specifically the C2 emission line which very often represents cold gas or molecular gas usually detected in many different galaxies. Which basically suggests that this is a galaxy with extremely ionizing conditions or extremely bright, very powerful and very massive stars emitting a lot of ultraviolet light and a lot of ionizing radiation. Which to the scientists behind one of the studies in the description suggests that this galaxy is extremely likely 
surrounded by a lot of neutral gas, or essentially this pristine primordial hydrogen gas that was present everywhere in the early universe and is usually the reason why a lot of galaxies far away become invisible in certain wavelengths. And so in a nutshell we have a galaxy that seems to be evolving really quickly and seems to also contain extreme interstellar medium conditions with a lot of ionized gas and ionizing radiation inside of it, but as expected is also surrounded by a lot of neutral hydrogen and a lot of cold gas, which in some sense once again confirms many other theories and many other predictions. And so in that sense the Big Bang Theory and all of the ideas we have about the evolution of the universe are still more or less correct. It confirms the Dark Ages, the presence of neutral hydrogen and the ionization of this gas by some of these early galaxies. But one of the more important discoveries in this case is actually the fact that we even found this galaxy. Since this galaxy was discovered in a tiny tiny piece of the night skies, comparable to a sand grain approximately two feet away from your face, here this also suggests that many such galaxies are very likely going to be discovered in additional observations in other regions of the night sky. And those additional observations will very likely explain a lot more. But at the moment what we can say for certain is that this is indeed an extremely active and rapidly evolving galaxy that seems to have formed quite rapidly within approximately 100 million years and already contains more stars and even more metallic materials compared to what we thought is possible. Exactly why though is not a question we can answer yet. And so until we get some answers or more observations, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some additional videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.